The first thing that comes to mind when you see an integral like this is what in the name of God are we supposed to do? Well, turns out there's a surprisingly elegant and really efficient solution to this using uh, a series expansion. So let's call our integral i and we're going to make use of the infinite series representation of the hyperbolic cosine function where cosh x equals the sum over the non-negative integers of x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial. So this implies that our integral i equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times the sum over k the sum over k of x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial integration with respect to x. And because this e to the negative x squared term is independent of the k variable, you can just slip it inside the integral. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of e to the negative x squared times x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial integration with respect to x. And clearly, because of this exponential term, because of this exponential term here, we have no problems regarding convergence. So we can, in fact, switch up the order of the summation and the integration operators using Fabini's theorem. So we can write this as the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial integration with respect to x. And the utility of the switch up will become clear in a few moments. Now, because we're integrating with respect to x and this 2k factorial term is independent of x, we can pull it out of the integration operator showcasing your excellent mathematical pullout skills. And we all know that a good pullout game is essential for mathematics, of course. So we have the sum over k of 1 by 2k factorial times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times x to the 2k dx. And this structure here is pretty easy to evaluate, to be honest. I'm talking about this integral that I'm going that, that I'm going to call i sub k. So i sub k equals the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x squared times x to the two k dx. And there's a very natural substitution to carry out here. If we let x squared equal t where this implies that x equals the square root of t. So this implies that 2x dx equals dt. And this, uh, we can write our integral now as that from 0 to infinity. Obviously, under our transformation, the limits of integration are not going to be altered in any way. So we have e to the negative t now. And this can be written, this term here can be written as x to the 2k minus 1 times x dx. And if you just put a factor of 2 and a factor of 1 half here, then you have the differential element dt. And all you have to do is transform this x to the 2k minus 1 term into the t world. Now we know what x is. x is the square root of t, which means that it is t to the 1 half. And this is being raised to 2k minus 1. So this can be written as t to the k minus 1 half. So that means we can write our integral as i sub k being equal to 1 half of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times uh, t to the k minus 1 half dt, which is, of course, the gamma function. So we know that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the n or t to the x or whatever uh, dt equals gamma n plus 1. So here we have uh, k minus 1 half. So we're going to get gamma k minus 1 half plus 1, and 1 minus 1 half is just 1 half. So we have 1 half of gamma 
k plus 1 half, and this is the structure for i sub k. Now, recalling what our target integral was, and this was i sub k, this implies that i equals the sum over k of 1 by 2k factorial of i sub k, which evaluates to 1 half of gamma k plus one half. And this factor of one half is just a constant, so we can write it um, outside here. There we go, and let me just write this um, a bit closer. Okay, now as far as this uh, term here is concerned, I'm talking about the gamma k plus one half term. We can evaluate or simplify the expression for our sum using the duplication formula. Link in the description below for the proof. Now as per the duplication formula, gamma k times gamma k plus one half, and that is a horrible gamma. So, okay, much better. So this product equals two to the one minus two k times the square root of pi times gamma two k. So this implies that i equals one half of the sum over k of one by two k factorial uh, times, or I can just write this upstairs in the numerator. So you have two to the one minus two k and the square root of pi is just a constant. So we can write it out here and we have gamma to k and to get this term we have to divide both sides by gamma k. Okay, this looks good so far. So this equals the square root of pi by 2 times the sum over k of 2 to the 1 times 2 to the negative 2k and gamma 2k is just 2k minus 1 factorial and 2k factorial is just 2k times 2k minus 1 factorial, and gamma k is just k minus 1 factorial. So you have some nice cancellations going on, going on here. And you're left with 2 times k, which cancels out with a 2 upstairs. So you're left with the square root of pi by 2 times the sum over k of 2 to the negative 2k, divided by k times k minus 1 factorial, which is, of course, k factorial itself. Now, the structure you have is, again, a familiar series expansion. Recall that the series expansion for uh, the function e to the x, uh, e to the x equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k divided by k factorial. And for some reason, my handwriting seems even worse than usual today. Or, and that's, it's as bad as always. So e to the x equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k divided by k factorial. So on comparison, we see that the sum we have is in fact e to the x for the case where x equals 2 to the negative 2 or 1 by 4, correct? So this implies that i equals the uh, i equals square root pi uh, square root of pi by 2 times e to the negative uh, e to the 1 fourth that is it's e to the 1 fourth. So, yeah, this is quite a nice result where you can write it as one half times the product of the square root of pi and the fourth root of e. So, yes, that's quite a beautiful result. And that was a fascinating solution development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.